men, especially men in their 50s or 60s or even older. If you are single and alone where you are living now and you haven't been able to make dating work, why not give Columbia a try? There are no guarantees in life, but you, as you are, are what many girls are looking for. Hello folks, this is Saiyan Chan, and this episode is the continuation of a multi-video analysis of whether Colombian girls like to date older men, and if so, why? And also, I want to explore why Colombian girls are different than girls from Western English-speaking Anglo countries such as the United States of America, England, Canada, and Australia. In part one, I explored the importance of finances and money and other male competition. Continuing on, let's get to reason three, which is Colombia is a traditional patriarchal society where in most families, men are still the leaders. Unlike in the United States where a large percentage of the population has been scrambled like eggs and have become totally confused regarding genders and gender roles, Colombia is still a place where things make sense when it comes to family, and the culture has not devolved into clown world status. Men in Colombia are respected for being men in the traditional sense by their society at large, and they're also respected for bringing to relationships what they've always traditionally brought finance, leadership, assertiveness, and strength, to name a few examples. And this is without taking anything away from the Colombian women. Older Colombian men that have their lives together, they are automatically looked upon with greater respect and deference. What does this word deference mean? I looked it up and the, de and the definition is yielding or submitting to the judgment of a recognized superior out of respect or reverence. Now, I couldn't find any scientific studies to back up what I'm about to say. And as a man with a science background, I couldn't even think of how to measure it scientifically, even if I were to try. But my feeling is based on acutely observing and learning from the social cues of other people in my own culture and the people in Colombia. The feeling I get is that there is just much more general widespread respect for older men, including the elderly. And my best guess is that it has something to do with the fact that life in Colombia is generally hard. These men were born playing life on hard difficulty, and there was no option to change the difficulty setting. Despite the difficulties and obstacles, they made it to the end of life and survived and managed to bring people up with them along the way, usually their children, now adults, and grandchildren. Now, what does growing up in a society such as this one do to the women? Well, they grow up respecting men and understanding the role the man has to play and the role that they have to play as women. Unlike the United States of America, which is a first world country, and people are playing the game of life on easy mode, and the government has replaced many fathers, the women, on average, have also played the game of life on hard difficulty. Growing up, it is highly likely that they will know single or widowed mothers raising kids without the father, and when they and when they and their families are living paycheck to paycheck, spending their whole lives just past the poverty line with no government social safety nets, the way most average people in Colombia are living, everyone learns really quick that the man, what he brings to a family with his finances and his presence, it's important. And that life would suck much more without the man. In Colombia and in many other parts of the world, Things are still this way, the way they have been for thousands of years with the couples forming and getting together due to economic necessity as the main thing. The women, 
They want a man, they need a man, and they know it. And they're not afraid to go after it. Now, I have to speak in generalities, and there is no doubt that you will find female gold diggers, hustlers, time wasters, scammers, etc. But let's not get sidetracked here, people. Focus on the bigger framework of what I'm explaining here because from my extensive travels throughout the world, I've noticed that Americans do not travel much internationally. And most are still stuck in a bubble, knowing only the culture in the USA. And what I'm trying to do is to explain that things are different in other places like Colombia. And also, I'm trying to explain why they are different. On average, you have Colombian girls being brought up in traditional, nuclear, multi-general families under a single roof who are used to being under the protection and leadership of the men in their lives, their fathers, grandfathers, uncles, etc. So when the Colombian girls deal with people like me and the men who watch my channel, the default role for them to play is the same submissive and traditionally feminine role they've played their whole lives in this patriarchal traditional society. That's the only script that they have in their minds and the only playbook they have to run. You show up as a traditional male with a traditional masculine mindset and boom, there's already a higher percentage of women that you match with who are looking for that type of man. And that, that's without you having to do anything extra besides show up. Things are already working in your favor in terms of matching with women that are looking for what you have to offer in terms of traditional masculine leadership and provisioning. Compare this to the USA where many women have been indoctrinated by a womanism-centric society. I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't need no man. Mm-hmm. After having experienced Colombian women, when I was still dating in the United States of America, I would meet womenist chicks with this kind of a mindset. I would automatically channel the great Senator Clay Davis and say to myself, shit, shit. To close out this point, I'm going to reference the godfather, Kevin Samuels. Go check out his channel if you like my stuff, you're going to love his. See. Men want cooperation from their women. Colombia, as a people-making factory, produces women who are used to cooperating with the males in their family, in general. Compare this to the USA where the idea of cooperation, submission, or self-sacrifice, compromise, it's offensive to many women. The idea, these ideas are offensive to many womenist women. And the way I see it, when it comes to relationships, marriage, and family formation, one of my responsibilities as a man is to actively screen out and reject women that would make poor candidates for long-term relationships. I have to fight the world to make the money that I make. And when I come home, I don't want to deal with a harpy. I encourage men to think of themselves as inspectors on the floor of a factory that is producing women. And these are the women that you come across in your life. Your job as a man, if you choose to do so, is to inspect the women for defects. Strong independent woman? Why the heck would I let a woman into my life that is independent and doesn't need me? Take, the, take out the quality control stamp, boom, stamp it, reject it. Move on to the next one. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, boom, reject it. If I so happen to come across a girl in the USA or in Colombia who, who knows that she wants a man, needs a man, is used to and can competently and maturely deal with the man, I'm going to rummage through my bag, find out, find where the approval stamp is. Okay, approved, approved for further processing. Move it along. You get it? Reason number four, age gap dating, where younger women date and marry significantly older men is common in Colombia and is also culturally 
and socially acceptable and encouraged. On top of that, there is no social stigma. This ties into the issue of finance because as I mentioned before in my first video, go check it out, survival and economic security is a major driving factor in relationship formation. In a poorer country like Colombia, where life is played on hard difficulty, it is easy for the women to observe what produces good life outcomes and what produces poor life outcomes. Let's start with poor life outcomes. Single moms in Colombia getting pregnant young, out of wedlock or divorced, with the father of their children no longer in the picture, not providing financial support. These girls are nearly guaranteed to have poor life outcomes. Men in general don't want to have to pay for and support other men's children. Men aren't going to take these women seriously or retain them long term, especially since most average men themselves are barely getting by financially. Single moms are going to stay single in general, and there is a very low probability that they will find another man to support them and their children financially. Most will be doomed, and I use this word, and I want to emphasize the use of this word, doomed, with no hope, to a lifetime of financial struggle and having to work long hours at their minimum wage jobs making just over a dollar an hour until their children are one day old enough to contribute. As Vince Carter once said, it's over. It's over. So now let's go over to an average outcome. An average outcome is where a woman is able to find, marry, and stay married to a man and raise children together. They can now work together as a combined and more efficient economic unit living under the same roof. And the larger combined social network of family and friends is available to help out during times of trouble. This is already massively better than the single mom scenario. So now, what's a good outcome for a Colombian woman? A good outcome would be meeting, marrying, and staying married to a man who really has his finances together, where he earns enough to carry himself, her, their children, and their extended families. There's a problem, though, because unless they were born rich, men have to become they have to make something of themselves and become more valuable to the economy in order to earn more. This doesn't happen generally to men in their 20s. For most men who do make it to high value men status in any country, it typically takes years and most don't arrive at significantly above average earnings until their 30s at their earliest in general, if they make it. This means that if a young woman wants a high value man, the chances of her landing one will be greatly increased if she increases the age limit of the man she is willing to date or marry. And many young Colombian girls are happy to do this. Remember folks, we're not talking about American girls here living life on easy mode. Financial survival and economic stability is a major, major motivating factor for the average Colombian girl. Go watch the Fresh and Fit podcast. Night after night, hundreds of girls in America. The majority don't want a man making less than $100,000 a year. But because Colombian girls, on average, have lived life on hard difficulty, I find them to be much more practical, realistic, and able to compromise than American girls, many of whom are entitled and straight up delusional. The Colombian women who are able to find, attract, and retain a rare high-value man, these women have won at life and flex just by going about their lives. It becomes a status thing. She and their kids are taken care of. Her man drives her around in a car while her single friends, they get to take the bus. In Colombia, I see couples where the man is significantly older than the woman he's with all the time. Many times there's a baby carriage or young children in tow, but there are unmistakable patterns. One, I see this usually in the most expensive areas, the highest end restaurants and bars, and even places like 
Juan Valdez Coffee, the Colombian equivalent of Starbucks located in the richest and nicest neighborhoods, where a Colombian purchasing a $5 cup of coffee is the equivalent of an American earning $10 an hour buying a drink at Starbucks for 40 bucks. Reason number two, the girls are pretty to beautiful to gorgeous. Sixes, eights, and nines because Kevin Samuels, they, he doesn't let women use sevens. The high value men, they want girls that are pleasant to look at. And the girls that are nice to look at want the men to have their financial life together. And boom, it's a match. Sorry, ladies. This is a contest where you cannot enter to compete unless you're pretty. It's not fair, but life was also not fair for the men who had to outcompete 90% of the other men in the economy to get to high value status. See, something that I've learned that bothers women about the crimson capsule and men charting their own path movement is how ruthlessly practical it is for men who look at what's offered to them when it comes to marriage and are able to assess the risks, find them to be unacceptable, and simply abandon the idea altogether to do something else with their lives. A lot of Colombian women also think practically and don't live in a make-believe fantasy land and are ruthlessly practical because they've had to be growing up living life on hard difficulty. Unlike the crazy entitled girls here in the United States thinking that they deserve nothing less than guys making $100,000 a year. Here's an example. You have a Colombian girl. She meets an older man who has his finances together and is a high value man in her country. Since she's only 21 years old, she would like him to be 25, but he's 45. That's not ideal, but they get along together. He's a kind man and no, and she knows that she, her kids, and her family will be taken care of. The large age gap isn't ideal, but it's good enough. Let's get married and out come the babies. Men who have their financial act together, Colombian or foreign, are rare in Colombia and the girls know that. And many practical and smart ones leverage their youth and beauty for the male equivalent of high value. And the age gap isn't ideal, but life for these girls in Colombia has never been ideal. Good enough is good enough. And these couples now can get together and get on with the next level of life, making babies and raising the next generation. And they have a partner to live their lives with and to grow old with. Compare this to all the single women in the USA calling into Kevin Samuel's show, age 35 and up, firmly in no man's land, who are going to die alone. Shout out to the godfather, Kevin Samuels. I feel strange sometimes having to explain this because as I've mentioned before, it's hard when you live in a bubble that is your own country, in my case, America, because what I think and accept as normal and believe is the only way of living, it's actually not true. It's not the only way to live. And I don't get to see it or observe it until I get out of America. I feel lucky to have been born Asian American, and in a case like this, I can take off the American hat, which programs me to believe that marriage is for love, and put on the Asian hat, which says marriage is for survival, economic stability, continuing the bloodline, and duty. Compare this to the USA where we have the garbage fed to us by Hollywood in movies and romantic comedies, resulting in an average divorce rate of 40% in the USA. Compare this to the Asian American Compare this to the Asian American divorce rate of 20%, one half, okay? And now compare it to Colombia's divorce rate of 9%, 9% nine freaking percent. It seems clear to me that the Americans don't know what the hell they are doing. It is a fail. The process by which Americans are getting married and getting divorced at a 40% clip is leading people to the cliffs. To the cliffs! So, with this information in mind, 
How is it applicable for the viewers of my channel, especially older men who might be curious about Colombian women or who want to know more about them and who might possibly be dissatisfied with the dating scene or the women in their home countries? So let's recap. I've made two videos and have given four major reasons why if you are an older man interested in dating in Colombia, you got a couple things going for you. One, your finances are way above the Colombian average. Two, you have little competition from younger men there, local and foreign. Three, Colombia is a traditional patriarchal society and a society where age gap dating is normal and it's understood to have benefits for both the man and the woman. With all these reasons, why not consider giving Colombia a shot? Again, I'm not trying to sell anyone that dating in Colombia is great. See episode 29 where I discuss the problems and difficulties that you are guaranteed to encounter dating in Colombia. I am merely presenting to the audience another possible viable option for dating, one which they may not have considered or even realized existed before. It is an option that worked for me and which has provided me with companionship and great satisfaction over the years. I'm simply sharing what I've learned and observed over many years, the good and the bad. You can give it a shot if you want or not, it's up to you. But I will end this video by asking men, especially men in their 50s or 60s or even older, if you are single and alone where you are living now and you haven't been able to make dating work, why not give Colombia a try? There are no guarantees in life, but you, as you are, are what many girls are looking for. To the detractors who will simplify this complex issue by saying, all Colombian girls want is money, I ask, have you ever considered the fact that all our money, our assets, accumulated material wealth, it's all play money. We can't take any of it with us when we die. If you're not happy with your life while you're alive, why not consider using some of this play money as part of an overall dating strategy to get the life outcome of a female companion, if that's what you desire? Folks, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I can't speak freestyle off the top of my head, so I actually have to write the entire essay before I record all my videos. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I would appreciate your help to get there. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed it. Share with other men who you think might benefit from it, or you can share it with women so that they can understand that men like me and others in the man sphere are waking up and letting these men know that they have options. And because dating is now a global marketplace, American girls, let's just say they have fierce competition just a few hours south of the border. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding you to always cogitate and analyze.